Okay, everyone, welcome back to our review of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This is going to be the spoiler video, so if you haven't already watched the non-spoiler video, stop and go do that. A link will be in the description, um, but we you want to watch that one first because we're going to take what we said in that one and we're going to give back up exam or we're going to uh, give examples as to why we uh, came up with the ideas that we did in that. Um, as a quick summary, basically we determined that, uh, in our opinion, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Quantum Mania is very entertaining, but ultimately heartless, brainless, and soulless because it is just, it, it just feels like it was a pre-manufactured movie that Marvel paid a bunch of money for. And then send it out to the masses. And we're going to discuss the reasonings for our... We're going to give examples for those uh, reasonings we believe that in this video. So as we said in the first one, um, it just feels like the movie had no brain. It feels like, you know, if you were to sit and think about anything that happened in this movie, it would fall apart if you sat for more than 30 seconds and thought about it. Um, I don't... I, I, in, I mean, like I said in the uh, first one, Ant-Man movies has always been a little inconsistent, but in this one, they just like, I, they even attempt to, to, uh, to explain some of the things like, you know, when Scott went through an end game, he said five years on in the outside world felt like five hours to him, but yet Michelle Pfeiffer's character, uh, was like, yeah, I spent 30 years in here, which is roughly equivalent to the amount of time that she spent outside. And they never really explained how much time she experienced, but it's it just seems wildly inconsistent. It's never been explained. And honestly, it's okay that it's never been explained for the most part until there become certain issues which we had in this one. And that is they're scattered throughout the quantum realm. They don't know where each other are, yet they're all experiencing time in roughly the same way. But then the ants that came through with them experienced a thousand years of growth and development and show up at the end and be the deus ex machina at the end. It's just, it's just a little, I mean, I don't want to keep saying the word inconsistent, but it's, it's a little tough to wrap your head around. Um, it just kind of breaks immersion for me. But I understand that, you know, the rule of cool applied and frankly, the, the, the moviegoers were like, or not the moviegoers, the 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 show the movie runners and the the producers and the director were like hey i want to see a bunch of ants i want to see an army of ants take on kang and beat him and it was cool it was interesting it was entertaining um but yeah just it, it was just weird to think that they couldn't put any explanation in it whatsoever as to why that happened and i mean that happens in other portions of the movie too but I don't know. It's just the the second problem that I have with it is just Kang is supposed to be this awe inspiring force. Kang the Conqueror, the ultimate guy down here, and his weapons and everything, and his armor and his technology is supposed to be so advanced. Yet he gets overrun by a bunch of ants, and when his plans are coming to fruition, too, it's just we're supposed to fear this guy. He's being lauded as the next the 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 next big bad of marvel phases four five and six and he's going to be you know the thanos-esque character but he gets defeated by three people and an army of ants i just it, it doesn't bode well for me and before you say well maybe one of his other variants will be scarier than he was they stated in the show that his other variants are the ones that exiled him because they feared him so much. So if he's the most feared version, it doesn't bode well for making his character look dangerous and uh, intelligent moving forward. Now, of course, he didn't... They said he died, but let's face it, no one really dies in, in these movies. If they want to bring him back, they can. I just... I don't know. It just didn't... It didn't seem like something that was very well thought out. It, it seemed like you know a very generic conveyor belt plot of big bad guy shows up bad guy gets defeated by some means because we want it to happen and then good guys go home i just it just it was not very 
log it, logical it wasn't very well thought out it didn't seem very clever it just kind of seemed like this is what happened because it needed to happen that way and so it just didn't feel like the movie was very intelligent in that sense now we also said that the movie didn't feel like it really had a heart and that is to say that it didn't make us feel anything um and i discussed that in the first part in pretty good details just like you know you don't hire paul rudd because he's an amazing dramatic actor you hire him because he's the charming dad type he's the one you know that the audience can kind of look at and say i like him he's not threatening to me <laughs> he's, he's he's a man in his 40s that is fairly well good looking but not necessarily threatening um and and he, we just like him he's charming and he's puppy and he looks like a puppy um but yeah he just didn't really have any he wasn't able to carry any emotional weight in any scenes oh, jonathan majors and to a lesser extent michelle pfeiffer were the only ones able to carry any dramatic tone any type of negative emotion in it even when kang is threatening cassie lang scott's daughter in front of him paul rudd just really kind of yells a lot uh, and it has that wide-eyed stare he doesn't seem angry he doesn't really seem fearful he just kind of seems like hey stop that you you stop i'll do what you want just stop it please and it just it didn't it didn't fare well to me it just didn't really work and uh, i mean that, that part of that is just paul rudd's lack of range as an actor and, and part of that is script writing because like i said michelle pfeiffer and, and michael douglas both of whom are known for their ability to convey dramatic weight just didn't have good writing at all um they just, there's a scene where they're talking about you know their the lovers that they took while michelle pfeiffer was trapped in the quantum realm and michael douglas is talking about this girl named linda and how it didn't work out and michelle pfeiffer goes why didn't why not what was wrong and he goes she wasn't you and I'm like, oh my god! First of all, I gagged a little bit in my mouth. It, that's that's just such a cliche line. Not only is it a cliche line, that is almost verbatim the line that in the uh, Indiana Jones gave in uh, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull when Marion is talking to him. They're having literally the exact same conversation where Marion's like, "There must have been others after me," and he goes, "There were," but the and and then she goes, "Why didn't they work out?" And he goes, "They weren't you, babe." I'm like, it's, it's almost verbatim, and the scenario is almost exactly the same. So almost, it's not even cliche, it's just straight plagiarism. <laughs> and that goes into the soul, soul issues of, of the, the movie being soulless. But before we get to those, let's talk about Cassie Lang's inspirational speech. And I, say, and, I, and I put that in quotes because it was supposed to be inspirational, but I, I didn't feel inspired by it whatsoever it, it felt like this is just something that the odd the the writers put in there because it needed to be there and and it just it didn't convey any real sense of drama to me she's just like hey guys i know we feel like we lose all the time and first of all who's we you've been there for all of an hour let's not like start lumping yourself in with the resistance fighters who have been fighting for god knows how long yeah we feel like we lose all the time cassie let's calm down but nothing in her performance and i don't know if this is because you know peyton reed didn't really want there to be a whole lot of drama which if that's the case then he might not have been the right guy for the job but because most of the movies tonally is just a, a, a comedy it's almost just a sitcom which he is he has worked on quite a few sitcoms and and tv shows and most of his films his filmography is all comedies i mean he did all of the the ant-man movies he did um i think he did this is 40 with paul rudd i think he did uh i know he did yes man with jim carrey uh but he's he's known for his comedies he's not known for being the guy who who's able to he's not known for his drama movies and so when cassie lane gets up there and she's just you know giving this inspirational speech it didn't feel inspirational. It felt very generic. It felt very, I mean, I've, I've seen football movies give better speeches or, or sports movies give better speeches. That was just, you're asking these people to go to war for you and for, I mean, for their benefit too, but you're the one asking them to do it. And it was just very much like high school, sophomore year class president speech. It just, it didn't, it, it, it had no emotion to it. 
Um, and it just, it, it's disappointing because like I said in the, in the first review, Marvel's better mo moments and better times when we've really fallen in love with the characters, with the stories, with the movies themselves are when they're able to bring something out in us, when they make us feel something. And there was just none of that in this movie to be had. Um, so that was just, I mean, you could really point to almost all the scenes and that there was nothing to be had, but. Cassie Lang specifically's lack of of emotion in her uh, in her inspirational speech just really really takes the cake I think. And then going back to you know the cliched lines and I mean there were several times when I was just like oh my god I can't believe they just said that. Not just because it was it's it, I mean they were straight ripped out of rom coms it feels like there's and at the final scene when when Scott is like, don't let go, don't ever let go. I'm like, oh my God, we're back in Titanic. Uh, it just, it, they did, it, it seemed like the movie just didn't care. Like the writer just did not care to think of anything that's even remotely close to original. It was just a bunch of tropes and, and not even tropes. I mean, everything is built off tropes. Tropes are around for reasons because they're typically pretty effective. But when you don't even try and come up with fresh dialogue or fresh scenes or fresh settings or or anything like that for them it just seems of a lack of caring like almost like you're crying out for help like you got forced to work on this movie and yeah you might be getting paid for it but you really don't care and it's just it, it felt like that it felt like a movie that just didn't care um and another problem that goes along with that not just the cliched dialogue but the cliched plot lines is that they're predictable. I mean, don't get me wrong. We went into the movie fairly well expecting that Ant-Man would win. Um, or at the very least survive or escape or whatever it was going to be. The good guys almost always win, especially in their solo films. Um, but how they win is typically pretty intriguing. Or at least you can kind of keep, you can be guessing at it. Um... But really, we all, as soon as we knew what elements were in play, because we've seen them in so many other films, and and because the writer just didn't decide, didn't add any type of variation or any type of spice or any type of flavor or any type of adaptation whatsoever, if you've seen Star Wars, if you've seen John Carter, if you've seen Tron Legacy, if you've seen half a dozen other movies, you could just predict how this was going to end. And, 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 not, and not just what was the ending was going to be, but how it was going to happen. Like, as soon as, you know, uh, they said, take these prisoners to the tower or everything, you can kind of be like, okay, so there's going to be a prisoner uprising. That's pretty standard. That happens. And then as soon as the ants came into play, you were like, okay, so the ants are going to form an army and they're going to, they're going to go wipe out they're going to be used against uh, Kang's forces and they're going to wipe them out. Got it. Okay. And as soon as you said, and as soon as you saw that uh, Scott Lang and Cassie Lang were the last two at the portal at the end, you knew Kang was going to show up and, and Scott was going to be have to, or was going to be forced to fight him one-on-one -on -one in that scenario. I mean, it was just, it was so, it was just so predictable, so predictable. And my, my wife, my wife felt in one way that, you know, Scott making the choice of fighting Kang and sacrificing himself to stay behind, um, was good storytelling because it was the exact same scenario that Michelle Pfeiffer did. And so she was like, this is, this is full circle. This is, this is good writing. And I'm, and I'm, I mean, that's one way to look at it. The other way is that it's lazy writing because literally they just copy and pasted the front of their movie into the ending with one different character. So, you know, however you guys want to look at it, you can look at it as full circle or you can look at it as lazy, but I'll let you guys decide on that one. That's probably a matter of personal opinion. I, I thought it was lazy. Um, and ultimately it didn't matter anyway, because as they had already shown at the beginning of the movie, Cassie, who was not shown to be, you know, she was never hinted at it being incredibly intelligent. She was just in, hinted at it as being, incredibly kind-hearted but somehow she figured out how to uh to send signals into the quantum zone by looking at hank Pym's old journals um we'll just let that one go 
But it, like as soon as they defeated Kang and 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 Ant Man and the Wasp got left behind, not not legitimately, not fifteen seconds later into the movie of runtime, another portal was opened up. I mean, there's just there was no consequences in a movie that was quite legitimately about, you know, standing up no matter the consequences. There were none. There were no consequences, and it just it it was a really shallow no depth look at standing up for the little guy um that will be ultimately forgettable um and it was a entertaining action movie that if you've seen any other entertaining action movie you'll be able to predict from start to finish and i think ultimately that's what's disappointing so but that'll do it for us that will be the spoiler section let me know in the comments what you guys thought if you did like our spoiler free or our spoiler uh videos on this movie please give them a like it really helps out in the algorithm please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um and let us know your thoughts in the comments that also really helps in the algorithm any type of activity anyone gives on the video will support it in the algorithm sending it to people thank you guys so much for being a blessing to us and supporting the video with your likes your subscriptions your comments and your views and i will see you in the next one